Well, let's welcome to the show Mr. Thomas Hansen, again, the Global VP of Revenue at Dropbox. Thomas, thank you very much for joining us. You bet. Thanks for the invite. Now, uh, normally, when we have a guest, we, we give them time to explain what it is that their company does and uh, you know what services they may offer. I, I don't think we really need to do that with Dropbox. Dropbox is one of those companies that became such a big name so quickly that everyone understands what you do. Do you ever have to do that pitch? You'd be surprised that you uh, you still have to go into a discussion. But I also think, look, the, the reality here is um, when Drew originally founded the company, it was really as a memory stick replace. He was sitting on a bus, didn't have a memory stick, got a, had to find a, a way around that. And, and on that notion, so to speak, Dropbox was born. Today, we're more than a memory stick in the cloud. Today, we are the uh, the world leading collaboration tool, tool that allows people to be creative together, to innovate together, to collaborate together. So there is an element of us having to tell that story and, and, and make, make, make certain that also folks out there, specifically in the enterprise, understands that whilst we were born as a consumer company almost nine years ago, we no longer are a company living in, in just in the consumer space. We're not a all company, we're an end company. So we are in, in B2C and in B2B. We are a serious enterprise, uh, enterprise player. We played in this space for, um, for three years now and uh, are very, very proud of the progress we made in that space. But there's still a little bit of explanation that, that one has to do and that's all good. That's all part of uh, good conversations with, uh, with, uh, with folks out there across the world. Now, we want to spend a lot of time talking about Dropbox pushing into the business side, into, into enterprise, because that's a fascinating story. But before yeah. we do that, let's, let's pull back a little bit. Let's give people a little bit of, a, of grounding for Dropbox. They may know the name, but they may not know the story. Now, Dropbox, yeah. you were really, um, if not the, one of the original poster children for this idea of born in the cloud. The, the ability to take an idea, a good idea, in this case, replacing that, the thumb drive, and yep. turn it from an idea into a, a concrete product and service in just a matter of weeks and months. Mm -hmm. uh, it, you know, it had not been done before, and it could only be done because these companies like Amazon and now Microsoft and Google were offering infrastructure as a service to for rent over the Internet. Can you talk about the development of Dropbox, how you landed on Amazon and then just exploded? Absolutely. You know, uh, before I even get there, Allow me just to uh, to tell you a quick story. In case you're wondering about my, my kind of strange accent, I'm born and raised in, in Denmark, although I haven't lived there for more than 20 years. Uh, for the last plus 20 years, I lived in the Middle East, in South Africa and Asia, and for the last seven years on, on US West Coast. My first job was I managed a windsurfing shop more than 20 years ago. And in that shop, we were trying to sell some goods. We were a local business, local customers. We didn't have a computer. We didn't have a cash register. I had an invoice book and shared an analog phone with the plumber next door. When you work like that, you are an analog local business. The beautiful thing about technology, of course, and specifically the cloud is, well, effectively, the cloud provides access for any business, whatever size they, they are, to move from being a local business to utilizing technology to work with their suppliers, customers, employees, you name it, to expand beyond the local city or suburb or region and to become a truly global micro enterprise or a global enterprise. So look, technology and cloud is a pretty significant enabler of many, many businesses, small, medium and large across the world, which is exciting, right? And that's why we're all in this business. In terms of Dropbox, um, you're quite right. Scaling Dropbox without the fundamental, uh, fully elastic platforms of someone like AWS would certainly have been, if not impossible, super, super challenging. Um, and uh, that certainly was a key enabler of, uh, of the explosive growth of Dropbox and the incredibly powerful user adoptions and, uh, and usage we've seen over the years that we're very, very humbled by and very grateful for. Um, we, uh, we obviously also <clears throat> very pleased with the fact that we continue to grow. Uh, we are today in a place where we've just announced two weeks ago that we've now just exceeded half a billion registered users. And it's it's always fun when you can move away from, previously we were talking about 400 million registered users, but now we can talk in billions instead of millions. So that's that's kind of fun. And again, something we 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 very, very grateful and humble by. So so yeah, that's that's the brief background. Fantastic. I, I, now, I, I, you, you touched on this a little bit, but would Dropbox have been possible at all if you had to build your own infrastructure at the beginning? 
Um, look, I, I am a firm believer that nothing is impossible in life. Um, but if you go back nine years, almost nine years ago, when, when the business got started, um, that it would have been uh, in incredibly challenging from a technology standpoint. Um, notwithstanding, from a funding perspective, from a money perspective, it would have been even more challenging. So if you go back and think of 20, uh, 2007, 8, 9, 10, uh, in those years, leveraging that a fully elastic platform that AWS S3 um, uh, offers, that of course made something possible that was darn close to impossible. Yeah. Today though, it's a very different story. But but it depends on the life stage you add as a company. And and again, the beautiful thing as a startup, whether we're talking in, in 2007 or whether you're talking today, March uh, 2016, reality is if you're a small company, it is incredible what you can do as a small company wherever you are in the US uh, and how fast you can scale and become a global meaningful company leveraging the infrastructure of great companies like uh, like um, AWS, Microsoft or Google. Right, exactly. And, and you know, it's, it is interesting to, to look at that because the idea for Dropbox came at just the right time, just as it was possible to do that without yeah. building out your own multi-billion dollar infrastructure. You bet. Um, which leads us to the next point. As Dropbox has grown, you've, you've really made a push to go beyond the consumer market that you started with into business yeah. and into, into enterprise. In fact, full disclaimer, Dropbox had been a sponsor of the Twit TV network uh, uh, last year at some point, and, and that's what you were pushing. You were really pushing your move yep. into the enterprise. Yep. What has been the most challenging part of doing that? Because consumer gives you the brand name recognition. People know who you are, people know what you do, and, and the, the sales pitch for the business side was always, why not just use the tools that your employees are already using to share files on their personal yeah. computers? Yeah. But it's not just a bigger Dropbox, and it's not just a Dropbox that has an additional piece of branding attached to it. You had to provide a different kind of service. What was the service you provided going from consumer to business, and what were the, the challenges of going from consumer to business? So, um, so the core areas we had to address as we as we move from uh, from being a B two B B two C to also being a B two B and and going really into the high end enter enterprise as well was to make sure that the classic tick boxes that anyone in IT in enterprise would look for, including the, the admin console, security. Um, migration and and so forth. Uh, now, look. When you look at where we are today, um, we've now been in in the enterprise space and the B two B space for uh, for almost three years. Uh, as I mentioned, we have half a billion, five hundred million registered users that every day bring Dropbox to work in more than eight million businesses. Today, we now have um, actually more than one hundred and fifty thousand paying companies, organizations as customers. And that's something we just announced last week. We have grown just in the past quarter with 25,000 paying companies, organizations. So it's a business that is scaling super fast. Here's the big thing, and here's what's changed in a really big way. Uh, candidly, when you think about consumerization of IT, and think of Apple as a good example of, of, of the early days of that as well. Um, IT professionals in the earlier days of, of, say, Apple or also of Dropbox coming into a work environment, specifically in larger enterprises, there was a certain uh, pushback. Uh, and as in some companies, depending on, on type of industry and ty type of IT professionals, that there would be a different reception of, of bring your own device or bring your own app or bring your own cloud in the, in the case of Dropbox. What I've seen ha happen in a significant way over the, the past period is where there used to be some pushback from IT professionals, specifically in, in larger enterprises, around the notion of shadow IT. What I see now is what, what was once deemed as uh, shadow IT is now viewed as solutions such as Dropbox that really makes IT the heroes again of the large corporations. And what I mean with, with that statement is, if you think about it, you have all these hundreds of millions of people bringing their own cloud to work, Dropbox but it's not supported by IT, not with the security that they demand and want. And here's a wonderful opportunity for IT professionals in large enterprises to then implement a company-wide solution built around Dropbox and provide their users across their organization with the security, the management, the support infrastructure that allows it to be a proper connected collaborative experience across their 
their company. Um, and that's hence the statement of uh, what a great opportunity for IT professionals, again, to become the heroes of the users as opposed to gatekeepers to the network. So uh, I see a lot of shift. Uh, I see uh, wonderful um, progress uh, in the US and across the world, in Asia and Europe, um, in terms of IT leaders, IT professionals being very progressive and shifting their views from a more negative dark view of shadow IT to a more embracing type of attitude and dealing with the reality of, hey, this can do something really good for our business and for users and, and for IT. Oh, we've got uh, uh, Creamy Corncod in our chat room who uh, is bringing up the point that uh, he read that Dropbox is used by about 97% of Fortune yeah. 500 companies in one shape or another. Yeah. And of course, the the consumer adoption is is fantastic. It's it's one of those things that you just have. I mean, even if it's the free account, you have some sort of access to Dropbox. Yeah. But we've got a very particular audience here on the Twit TV network. They're tech savvy. They watch yeah. this channel all day. Yeah. One of the shows that they really love is a, is a show called Security Now with Steve Gibson. And Steve Gibson's thing is trust no one. And for for a lot of these folks. The idea of putting their sensitive information up in the cloud on someone else's server, someone else's computer, is almost anathema. You, you I mean, it, it doesn't sound like it could be secure. I know that Dropbox goes through this when you're pitching business services. Yeah. I know Dropbox yeah. goes through this when you're pitching consumer services. So yeah. how, how have you allayed the fears of people who are saying, wait a minute, how can I give you the things that are, are most important to me if I don't even know where they're physically located in the world. Yeah, yeah. I think I can go through all the standard pitch components that you talk about where, where we take all the usual measures that you would expect from a world-class enterprise-ready player, um, the ISO certifications we have, how you have the secure, security and encryption built into the product. The, the, the one area perhaps I would like to, to specifically talk about is how we go about actually saving the data um, uh, and what actually happens to it. So, you know, some scenarios we, we see a lot of is, uh, is photos and videos and very large files. We don't save um, um, one file as, 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 uh, as, as one component. Actually, we chop it up into four um, make pieces, oh. um, blocks. And those are encrypted both at rest and in, in our data centers and in transit, of course. And it means two things. It means that from a technology perspective, as you make changes to a file um, and as you collaborate on a file, you don't have to, to bring down the whole new file or save the entire file you've been working on, but just the formic component or the formic block you've been working on. But moreover, from a encryption and security perspective, literally uh, as a hacker going in, and, and if you ever could get access, which you won't, but uh, actually figuring out how to piece those blocks together it adds a layer of um, of security that no one else in the industry does. So that's something that's very unique that provides us with an ability to do sync at the highest speed of any of our competitors. We are two to three times faster than our competitors. We have a higher success rate in syncing data for our users, which matters a great deal. And of course, it adds the other uh, another security dimension to it that we feel really, really good about. I, I did not know that you actually segment the files. That's yeah. That's actually really good. So yeah. if, if you were to breach, if somehow, if you were to breach the Dropbox system, you'd have to piece back together the files in order to get something that could actually be read. Yeah, and those those blocks would sit across multiple data centers with no logic to it from a from a intruder perspective. But again, uh, you, you know, it's a very hypothetical example. We haven't had that. We won't have that. Um, but we feel good about the addi additional dimensions uh, we have. Look, the notion of <clears throat> of trust and security is in the fabric. It's in the DNA of our founders, of Drew and Arash. As a matter of fact, it, it for, it's a form part of actually our company values, our five company values. Trust is, uh, is one of those five. It is something we take very serious. Look, we have peta, petabyte after petabyte of data. We have the largest repository in the world of um, Adobe file, of Microsoft Office files, more than Adobe or Microsoft themselves have, have files. We, we have more than 150 billion files. We service half a billion users. We have to take this seriously. It's something we invest in on an ongoing basis, uh, and we are serious. Okay, I, I'm impressed, but if I don't ask one question, 
uh, the, yeah. the chat room will be very upset with me. And that is who keeps the keys? Because if we're, I mean, yes, it's, it's good that they're segmented and it's good that you are encrypted in storage and encrypted in transport. That's what we would expect. But there's always going to be a subset of our audience who's, who they will not trust any solution unless they're the only ones who keep the keys. And, and I understand that there's, there's a big risk of losing customer files because if they lose their keys, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Do you have a tier of service that allows the keys to be kept only on the user side and have Dropbox not have them at all? We do not as a first party solution today ourselves. That may change in the future, although I'm not making a product announcement here. Uh, <clears throat> the beautiful thing about our offering is uh, through our extensible open APIs, we now have more than 300,000 API integrations ranging from the Adobe's, Google, Apple, Apple's, Microsoft's of the world to very, very small, small but, but great value add uh, players. And that includes um, some great encryption security partners we're working with. So that's an offering that can be uh, that can be integrated, but it's not part of our first party offering today. Uh, that may change, but as I said, I'm not making a, a product announcement. Right, uh, but also it just makes sense because you've got partners like Adobe, you've got partners like Sukasa, who yeah. they do provide very robust solutions that, that will do exactly that. They'll keep the You're keys on. on the yeah. user side, yeah. but it keeps Look, Dropbox from having to deal with an irate customer who's saying, what do you mean you can't get me back into my account oh. even though that's how I designed it? <laughs> you so. spot on. It's actually deep, it's actually deeper than that. You answer something super good, which is, look, you don't want to have to have an encryption solution, a key solution for every single uh, cloud solution you have as a company. What you want to be able to, to have is one encryption solution that integrates with whatever cloud solution you have across the enterprise. And that is what we offer. Having that rich ecosystem uh, of solutions that poured in that that links into our into our core offering, those three hundred thousand plus APIs, that's what makes the the difference. Uh, we uh, we have an incredible amount of uh, of traffic on a daily basis. We have now um, more than forty billion API calls on a on a monthly basis and and ramping incredibly fast. So uh, volume speaks uh, speaks um, speaks here clearly high level of integration, high level of use, it's add, add, adding value to our customers out there, uh, small small and large and, and very, very large.